Okay, so we'll go back to another video. So here we're actually going to be doing dealing with a limit involving radicals, but also dealing with the floor function including. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the square root of n squared plus n plus 1 subtract the floor of the same quantities, floor of square root n squared plus n plus 1. So you might think that you would have to utilize the definition of a floor function in order to help evaluate this interesting limit. We don't really have to go to that extent. If you can, sure, but in this video, I'm actually going to take these to a different approach. Rather, what we can do is we're actually going to utilize a inequality to help rewrite the floor function without having to use that sort of, you know, definition. And it's actually just a takeaway from there that once we utilize that, that we can actually just use algebraic manipulations to actually, you know, compute this limit. So today's video is really just going to be a short one. I think this is actually the first in like out of my limits playlist that involves a floor function. I could be wrong, but this one I feel like is worth an interesting, you know, take that I think everybody should pay attention to or rather, you know, look into. So with that, let's actually just jump right in. So the inequality that we'll be dealing with, so this isn't something that's justified in a way that you actually learn from, you know, in past, like during the past when you're dealing in school, when you learn about inequalities. This is more in a take that we have to be a little bit creative and take things into, you know, an, um, another approach. So what we'll start off with is that we have n square, right? So where are we going with this? So now let's suppose that I create this lower bound for n square and say that this is strictly less than n square plus n plus 1. So of course, as mentioned, you just have to go a little bit outside the box to think about this. So anything for the integers especially, this is even. So if I plug in anything, obviously we know that this is actually going to be bigger, whatever I plug in for n. So if that's the situation, so in this compound inequality we're actually going to create, now I'll create that this inequality, so we have yet again less than is going to be n squared plus 2n plus 1. So simply just add another n to it. So now, what's the point of this? Notice that n squared plus 2n plus 1 can be decomposed to have the following um, binomial factor of n plus 1 quantity squared. Okay. So with this in mind, now let's actually take the square root of everything of this compound inequality. So now I have that this is just n, which is now strictly less than the square root of n squared plus n plus 1, and then that's strictly less than n plus 1. So as mentioned, we don't even have to use the definition of the floor function, but notice that this is actually pretty similar. Now, of course, that we don't have the inclusive inequality for that floor function, but what we're going to do next is notice that if I were to take the floor of the center of our compound inequality, we have that no matter what we plug in for the integer n, it's actually that. So I'm actually going to write this. So the floor, so therefore the floor of the square root of n squared plus n plus 1 is indeed just going to equal n. So that's actually it. So utilizing this, you know, creative approach for the inequality, now we can actually just substitute this back into our limit that, our given limit that we want to evaluate. So before I actually take the limit, let's now actually go into the world of algebra and like fix some things up. So therefore, so let me actually switch to a different marker for this. So now then we have the square root. So I'm just dealing with the argument that we're dealing with before we take the limit. So n squared plus n plus one, then subtract the floor of the square root of n squared plus n plus one. Indeed is that from that inequality, we can say that this is just simply just the square root of n squared plus n plus one, then subtract n. Okay, so, so far what we're dealing with is that we're taking the limit of this entire expression. But how do we actually do something like this? Wouldn't it just diverge towards, or rather approach towards infinity if we were to plug everything for, you know, n approaches infinity? I know I said that a little redundantly, but no, we don't have to. If, as you learn in Calculus 1, if you're dealing with limits in this sort of expression with the radicals, we can actually now just multiply the conjugate. So now instead, I'll just multiply this entire expression with its positive conjugate. So now let me write this in parentheses. So we're not taking any limit just yet. We're just actually just getting into the you know meat and grind when it comes to the algebra perspective. So now we have the square root of n squared plus n plus one, and then that's subtract n. Now multiply with the positive, so now the square root of n squared plus n plus one, then plus n, 
Then of course, when you're dealing with this, you're actually, if you want to preserve that equality, of course, you have to multiply and divide with whatever it is that you're actually multiplying with that conjugate. So now with the denominator, we have that this is the square root of n squared plus n plus one, and n plus n. So of course, when it comes as you notice with the numerator, this is actually in the form of a difference of squares. So I have n squared plus n plus one, so the radicals will cancel, and then subtract n squared, and then we're still dealing with the denominator on the bottom, n squared plus n plus one, and then plus n. Then we have that the numerator just cancels up the n squared, and so we're just left with n plus one, and then divided by the square root of n squared plus n plus one, and then plus n. How do we proceed forward with this? I mean, even if we were to take the limit as n approaches infinity, that's actually not gonna be a little bit, that's not gonna be exactly as easy. So what we'll do here is let's actually divide the n to both the numerator and denominator. So by doing so, I have that this is gonna be one plus, now one divided by n. Now just divide n to the denominator as well. Well, if I were to do that, well, first, this is just gonna be one, so that's easy and out of the way. What do we do for n divided by this radical. Well, instead, we can actually just move this n then into the radical, so that'll just put that back into n squared, just divide all that. Well, then now that'll now turn out to be just the square root of one, then plus one divided by n. That's just from n squared divided by from the n, and then plus one divided by n squared. And then now next is just plus one. So now with that out of the way, now let's just take the limit as n approaches infinity. So now, maybe I should just move that to the next line over here. It looks weird if I put it out there because I was actually gonna use it for the next line anyway. So now we take this as n approaches infinity. So I'm actually just gonna write this in full. So I have the limit as n approaches infinity of our given, which has now been expressed to now the new expression of one divided by or one plus one divided by n, and then the square root of one plus one divided by n plus one divided by n squared plus one. Now we take that as n approaches infinity, of course this is just gonna be one plus zero, since one divided by, or approaching infinity is gonna approach zero, then under the square root for the denominator over here, so this is gonna be one plus approaching zero again, then plus zero again from here, then plus one. And so therefore, just add everything up together. And so therefore, this entire limit that it approaches to is going to approach one half. And so therefore, that is our final answer for our given limit, dealing with a classification of the floor function without having to utilize the definition of that and so forth. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.